Can we slide to the alternate universe where I'm Jonathan Reese Davies instead? No, you're a traffic light. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, joined every week by Jordan Swag and one Pedro Mateus, and you at home, Shot Realm Dynamic, help on his form, Cocaine Voltron. Gentlemen, when was the last time that you smashed your knee on the top of your brec- breakfast nook? You know, your, your kitchen table, your dining room table? I don't, They're a little you know, too high for my knees. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a big sit down and eat person. Oh, no, uh, I don't know. I wasn't sitting down or eating. What, what, <laughs> where, 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 where my knee gets smashed most of the time is getting into cars. Mm. If like the seat is a little too far up, I'll smash my knee like right on the airbag or like right, right on the, the, the glove compartment. That, that, that's, all, that's always fun because then you're like halfway in the car and you're just like, ah, fuck. And then, yeah, it's, it's no, no good. Man. I was, uh, Cardinal sin on my part. I never walk around my house barefoot. I got hardwood floors everywhere. I clean my, like, their dust magnets. I always keep them clean, keep them swept. But if there's one microscopic particle, and if I don't have on socks or sandals, I will find it, which I did. <laughs> Coming out of the shower, I'm tooling around. There was something, I was heading to the kitchen doing something, and I stopped because something was played on the tablet. I got sitting on that table. I'm like, what's going on here? And I stepped on something, like a grain of salt, you know, just whatever it was. I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I, I'm not like hyper flexible, but I'm flexible enough to pick my knee up and like turn my foot around. And I'm watching the fucking tablet and like, oh, what's going on here? And I'm just like reaching down and like grab that. And I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, that's like a little speck of acorn or some shit like that. And put my knee down and it caught right on the edge in the top. <laughs> Just at full force. Now, to understand, this breakfast nook is a full-size, real, not imitation, whiskey barrel that has been cut in half, to give you an idea. <laughs> it got scooted, is how hard I hit it. Like, it, it, it rocked its did, little world, man. Did you hit it hard enough to break skin? Or Oh, yeah, I broke, broke skin, considered passing out for a minute, because that would have stopped <laughs> the pain. I assumed. I was like, that'd be pretty dope if I just blacked out right now. And, um... No, no long-term damage or anything like that. Oh, that that that, that always sucks, though. <sighs> but knee, knee, knees and shins, it's like the the random. It's spiky. been a long. That, that was always like it has been a long time since I've taken a shot to the shin. Which you know what? Good. That's awesome. One of the things I want to touch on, though, how are you guys with like customer service? Because I ran into a situation earlier this week with, and I'm trying to understand the psychology of a YouTube comment. So yes, I know. Feel free to just skip ahead, <laughs> right? I had done a thing on Firewire video and a uh, guy, guy hits back in the comment section. He's like, wrong! Exclamation point. I'm like, well, this is going to be good. Really? Let me go get some drink here. Because it's a paragraph. <laughs> wall of text. Get a nice tell- little lemonade to read your book yeah, with yeah, you. Right, yeah. right. And like, oh, just shoot this over to the Kindle. We'll take it outside and read it on the back. Um, yeah. Just going on about none of this works. Can't make this work. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, just very squeaky wheel. Blah. I'm like, does this work when you actually have to deal with, you know, a paid customer service type person that you're calling up? You scream and just do all that. And like, maybe they take the stance of, oh, sir, of course, we'll help you out. So. There are people who do that. Uh, so, I, like, ha- having been on like either either end of the phone, and P- Pedro, I'm sure you you've been mm-hmm. on that. So, yeah. So yeah. So sometimes you do get the people who are just like super fucking entitled and are like, "Oh, this is terrible. I hate you and everything, and I'm not going to be helpful despite the fact that, and I'm just going to be super abusive to you despite the fact that just some random person on the other end making minimum and wage or whatever calling you up for assistance effectively. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Help, help me, you son of a bitch. And yes, and d- depending on like what your level of position is, I've been fortunate enough that like I've been I've been in like tier two and tier three positions where it's like, yeah, no, goodbye. Uh, but sometimes if you're like level one or if you're like a, you're a junior, sometimes you're stuck dealing with that person. You're you're told you're told no, you deal with it and then you escalate. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm t- so, I was trying to figure out the psychology behind it. Like, this, yeah. uh, this has to be a strategy that this person has implemented at some point fortunately it's 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 the it's the karen thing yeah 
Like if I just scream loud enough and tell you it's all your fault, you will be inspired yeah, you to... will be compelled to prove your own point and uh, try to prove I, I, me wrong. I, 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 will, I will intimidate you into doing the thing that you are being paid to do. So mm-hmm. I, I think the moral of the story, be very cautious when you're applying this strategy to a topic that maybe seven people on the fucking planet has the information oh, to oh, help you I, out with. I wonder. I, I, I wonder. Because we were talking about this in the, uh, in the after shows and about people needing to work retail jobs. Yeah. I wonder if people who do this have not worked retail jobs. They've never been on the other side. I have to assume. Or maybe they have and they're like letting out their frustrations. Oh, they did that to me a bunch of times. Let's try. Yeah, man. Maybe maybe it's transparent. Unabridged jackasses. Now, fortunately, I was like, this this name seems familiar because I try to keep track. So I I do a interfacing Linux audio series where I cover fight. This was a Firewire topic like here. And I I have a bunch of the old knowledge that I built up. Like, that name seems familiar. Same video three months ago. This motherfucker had written another thing. I'm like, hey, this isn't working. And I asked him a very simple question that he never replied to. So I was able to write back. I'm like, I tried to help you three months ago. You never replied, period. And that's all <laughs> you'll ever get. I can solve this problem. I know what's freaking wrong just by tea leaving that description. I could solve your problem, dude, if you're watching this. Fuck you. All GC cares. <laughs> Have fun. There's not another YouTuber that can fix that for you. How about you, Jordan? Well, I, I didn't I didn't have much in the way of like negative interactions with uh, customer service or anything like that. Today, I, I got to drive to Hamilton for an hour. Well, it was supposed to be an hour drive. Then we got stuck in traffic. Uh, so it, it, it was a lovely afternoon of uh, furniture shopping and black metal. So that, 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 that's my that's my story for the afternoon. Furniture shopping. Um, well, we have to touch on that a little bit because we have such a short show this week. So let's <laughs> right. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure, let's, let's, spend, let's spend more time talking about my end tables for my living room. End they tables? have they have a shelf and drawers, and they're perfectly flush with the height of the couch, so you can like use them as like uh, like table rests. And stuff. Now, are you guys uh, getting like antique stuff, new stuff? No, just used. It was like fifty. It was like a two two for like a hundred bucks of like these nice wooden um, wooden like drawers. With- Did you smash your knee into it yet? <laughs> No, that, no. I'll, that, that's coming in a few months. So okay. I'll, 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 I'll give you the knee review in, in, a, in a little bit. <sighs> let, right. let. Pedro Mateus, since you're here. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? It's all right. Actually, I, I see oh, your uh, roll of tape is not behind you this week. Yes, it's, uh, it's been used. Uh, not all of it, just like a bit. But yeah, no, uh, myself and Nori took turns with the uh, drill and ascending discs. On the headlights of the car, they look magnificent. Well, if you get real close to them, you can see there's still some discoloration on the top. But they look, from a distance, they look brand new. So, uh, good job, Auto Klim. Those instructions, on point. <laughs> Are you planning on flipping this car? Are you just, like, souping it up and then you're gonna turn it around and try to sell it for more? Uh, no, I'm just, I want to drive as nice a car as I possibly can, so I'm gonna fix what I can. Oh, and uh, Nori was just raring to use the drill yeah. to get the uh, the headlights Imagining uh, looking you the pretty. entire time. Oh yeah. Every, <laughs> every, everyone, I think everyone likes playing with the drill. I think that's like a universal thing. It's, it's a power thing. tool thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> I straight up forgot to mention this to either of you in the pre-pre super shows. And go back and listen to that if you're a Patreon. But I'll, I'll go ahead and give you this. Somebody, uh, a production company, like no joke, I checked them out. This is legit. Has offered us money to train their AI on our podcast. <laughs> How much money? <laughs> Not Scientists are, are, are shocked that they've created the first suicidal AI. <laughs> <laughs> what they needed was something that we're in a unique position to hand out is 10 years worth. Because mm-hmm. you think of a consistent yes. language model that we have. But what they wanted was um, like the they were under some assumption that I archived this shit. <laughs> and they found this because I post a dry, just mm. the unprocessed tracks to archive, and I post them on the R podcasting to help people out because people are looking for that audio to play around with and learn how to mix. And that's how that person tracked me down. He's like, I run this, and like I, I, I just don't have it. Uh, if I did, I think it was something like five thousand dollars. That seems low. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, for for I'll, our I'll, entire I'll, discography. 
Yeah, and, yeah. and like what like we 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 would need some like real points on the back end type shit if like that was yeah for five thousand dollars. Was explained dollars. not to be. I'll forward you guys the email. Sure. <laughs> you, I was like, this is too much. Plus, it doesn't matter because I don't have things archived in wave format either way, and that's what they wanted was like the dry multi track without any processing to train whatever. So. Womp womp. We're gonna the, the, the P and GPT will soon, soon All stand I'm saying, for Pedro. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> Cortana will not be getting slightly more unhinged. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Play those Halo games. She, she, it's gonna happen anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of that's kind of her plot arc. We have Cortana at home. We call her the horse. The horse will not respond to any of your voice commands, though. It'll simply jiggle at you in judgment. It's the Steam. Steam. Deck two, you guys, it's, it's here. here. It's coming Guaranteed. out. Oh Real my god! 100%. Twenty gigs Verified. of RAM, GTX forty ninety Ti embedded in the board. And we will absolutely be having the real conversation of like, remember when we were joking about the twenty gigs of RAM and the um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, and, and uh, the built-in VR display and the yeah. it's been yeah. and the it's software been coming machine. since August and no one noticed. So yeah, no, there's uh, there was a um. Basically, Valve just put through the uh, FCC application for something that used a different Wi-Fi chip that uh, the Steam Deck currently uses, and it basically went unnoticed since August, and now people have started to pick it up on that because, well, there's the rumors that uh, Valve may be working on some new hardware thing. Now, it seems to be the... um, the Steam Deck is getting a new uh, M.2 Wi-Fi card. I suppose that technically counts as a refresh. And it's better than changing, you know, co- in- integral components of something and not saying anything. Samsung, SanDisk, etc. <laughs> People just changing parts of SSDs without telling other. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? You, you want to throw a Sam- Samsung under the bus, but they replaced uh, their out-of-stock part with a better part. <laughs> They still changed the thing. They, they changed the thing, but they, they like <laughs> used the part from the more expensive drive for their cheaper drives. And you're like, curse you, Samsung. Yeah, it's, it, it's like when the gas station runs out of regular fuel and they just give you premium for uh, the same price. How dare you? You know there's that person, though, man. Dude, I, I, I did that once while I was working at a gas station. People got mad. I'm like, but but it's better gas for cheap. <laughs> and it, it will mix with your current gas. Sir, it just sir, won't just, be just, just one premium. moment, sir. Let me finish uh, this YouTube comment and I'll be up. Uh, I'll deal with you in a minute. <laughs> you should come in, in the gas station, yeah. But uh, yeah, the 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 new Wi-Fi chip is supposed to be a lower power one. They're trying to say like, hey, they're they're trying to get through the FCC thing because they're like, hey, this is a weaker chip than the one we shipped originally, so you shouldn't realistically have to recertify it, right? Question mark. Uh, they, I mean, they got to try, right? Uh, yeah, so, you, you, they got to try. I mean, yeah, Wi-Fi six E, that's great. I mean, it's going to be better because one thing you've constantly heard people about the speeds of like transferring libraries and downloading stuff from the Steam Deck. It's not that great. Especially over your, lo- thing, though. over your local. Well, apparently Valve might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I think Valve just don't want to deal with it anymore. It's just, let's just use a different one. How's that? <laughs> Possibly. But you know what? They do make the point. Like, this is one way to, like, slide everything through. You never know what we minded I'm getting. Because, you know, we've talked uh, maybe not a week before last, I think. Um, old Loopy was like, yo, we're not doing any, like, serious hardware upgrades to this. But we can most definitely see something like OLED screens. People would be. Because one of the things Valve said they were really surprised about was that their top-end Steam Deck sold out the quickest. They were like, mm. huh, we didn't expect that. So you know there's a little bit of mindset there at Valve. Like, we can make these people are willing to pay more for these if we throw some extra bonuses on there. And I could see a new screen, possibly Valve wanting to go ahead and get ahead of the game and making a more easily serviceable battery one that's not like super glued in that would be uh, very I, good yes <laughs> I, I, I was just thinking even like going with just a lower power wi-fi chip maybe they're just like swapping out a bunch of the components with lower power equivalents just to better mm-hmm. extend battery life like it, it could just be something as simple as that mm-hmm. like oh i mean more than likely that's why you don't need to get super excited it could just be this one chip set change but it would also be a good time if you're doing any type of hardware changing to like if you get some other things planned just go ahead and 
Well, oh, slide you, that through too. You know, it'd be really nice is if they uh, managed to like negotiate a little bit more space for the NVMe, so you could stick a bigger drive in there. That would be nice. Yeah, just have know. like twenty two forty twos instead of just a twenty two thirties. Nope, three yeah. and a quarter SATA. Floppy? Fl- no, we need a floppy drive. We need to. We need to feed Skyrim floppy one of three thousands. <laughs> Inst- insert the next floppy disk. What would be your um like? If, okay, you're not going to get a change in the performance, but what would be like the dream feature? I'm going to ask either either one of you because you have Steam Decks. Like, what would be the quality of life thing that you know you wouldn't maybe necessarily buy a new Steam Deck for, but you would be excited to be like, oh man, and when this Steam Deck dies, I can't wait to swappable the- battery. I, I have a few. <laughs> It's, yeah, the battery, absolutely, but also the fan. Uh, instead of having a single loud fan, maybe have two fans instead. A water-cooled backpack accessory. Yes. Something that would, you know, make that make less noise so that I could actually, while Nori is asleep, I could keep playing without the fan going... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, that, that, that is... That, the, the, the fan is kind of a nuisance, yeah, if you're playing in bed with someone else. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's why you got to hold it on the put a pillow right there. <laughs> yeah, put, put a pillow you, on top yeah, of the person you're sleeping the next to. And then, and, yeah, and then they then they can't hear it anymore. <laughs> and the uh, the last one is uh, the screen. I absolutely want instead of like the. I know that they picked the 1280 by 800 because cheap. There were a bunch of them from tablets uh, that you know the cheap tablets. They were all uh, 1280 by 800, so fair enough. But if they can find an OLED 720p, proper 720p, 1280 by 720, with the variable refresh rate or let you set down to 40 hertz, same as this one does, that would be perfect. That that would actually be perfect. <laughs> Maybe some, like, contactless charging stuff. That would be nice, too. You can just, like, drop it on the thing or, I don't know. Um, Hot swappable battery. Yeah, I, 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 Make I want it a my double thing that clicks. I, I, I want, I want, I want my D cell battery <laughs> add on for my Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah, no, a USB Type C port on the bottom would probably wouldn't not go amiss. Yes. No, no, no. Everybody's fine with a little hangover dongle thing that plugs in. That. Yeah, that's why you get them. <laughs> nope, yeah, you, you can't use that, Pedro. Everybody told me I was crazy, but I was like, "That's stupid." <laughs> <laughs> when they first announced the dock, and I'm like, that's a bad design. I'm like, uh uh-uh. uh. Like, guess, huh? Let's be honest. Yeah. The, the, this would kind of be a performance bump, but like, some sort of eGPU support would be really nice. Hmm. Um, technically, already could be done. If, I mean, uh... <laughs> dozen of people would be excited about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's not necessarily that you want to do it, you just want to know that you could. You could, yeah, to, to have the option, right? Like, extend the life of it, like, a little bit. Look forward to the uh, reports pre- showing up on the Steam Deck. I was like, does not work with my um, Reva 128. Does does not work with my Intel Arc 580. Oh, spoilers. Oh, stay tuned. <laughs> the uh, USB 3, uh, 3, uh, is it 3.2 Gen 2x4 port that the Steam Deck has. You know what, Valve? Is- Fuck it. Let's live a little. Give me a Firewire port. <laughs> <laughs> not not many firewire full size extra uh, chunky. No, no, firewire I ended. I'm happy with that. Just just confuse the hell out of people. They won't even know what it is. No, or just have like the OG game link cable. Of the Thunderbolt <laughs> thing and just have Thunderbolt and stop with the USB naming. <laughs> oh man, I think it was Tech Tangents that showed up. Apparently, in an alternate universe, they do exist. There's a firewire thumb drives. Hmm. Which makes sense because that thing would be ludicrously faster than USB two the entire oh, time USB two existed. Believing intensifies. Proton <laughs> is something that you can play on your Steam Deck, and there's a new version, not um, eight point zero dash four. A couple of things in there. The big one that stuck right out to me is something that I'm being blind to, and I can't find it on the way stream. Here we go. Um, this this is quite unfortunate. Uh, they fixed uh, Street Fighter VI claiming that Proton players are always connected via wired interface. <laughs> I found this to be infinitely amusing because I watch a couple of people who stream Street Fighter VI, um, and that is like a big thing that they do is make sure that they're not matched up with people on Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. 
you know, they, they just don't want that. So you peasants on your Wi-Fi, you're just going to have to go back playing with your own kind. And, uh, and with, with due concern, too, no matter how much rollback the net code you throw at it, brah, it, Wi-Fi is just a shit thing for competitive gaming, WebRTC, streaming. I look forward to the comments on the YouTube video. I'm like, no, it's bloating. Not uh, <laughs> B- buffering, yeah, <laughs> yeah, circle, 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 circle. So that was definitely a thing. And another thing is, uh, they've kind of continued going ham with the NV API, uh, enabling that for a gang of new things up to and including Ratchet and Clank, which is good to see. And Warhammer 40k Dark Tide, Pedro, what's the NV API? It sounds like some hippie moon stuff those Linux weirdos use. Yes, uh, 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 if you're not aware, by default, Proton just straight up lies to your game. If you have an NVIDIA card or an AMD card, it doesn't matter, because Proton is always going to tell the game, no, no, that that's that's an AMD card, shut up and take it. And uh, the game goes, okay. And it works well for a lot of things, and they did that at first for compatibility's sake, but as it turns out, there are quite a few games that do expect NVIDIA-specific things. So you have the option to enable NVAPI for it's those games. they're trying to use things like DLSS. Yeah, the, 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 the RTX, RTX stuff, yeah. effectively. Yeah, the, yes. there's, there's, a bunch, there's a bunch of like the driver space stuff that is exposed via NVAPI in user space that a lot of the newer games are taking advantage of. an NVIDIA that, card, yeah. you probably know the moon glyph for the command line option already because you want you to use You could also set it in the Proton uh, config file. Mm, you mm, could just enable that. that. Yep. Uh... What what I what stood out to me is apparently Dwarf Fortress got a fix of all things in Proton. <laughs> you would think that that would just like run perfectly fine, but apparently no. The also, Linux um, version is it out yet? Because it was delayed. They released the Windows version first, and it's only out now, or it's now out in beta, something like that. This uh, is well, a danger to the alternate universe where people like sliders takes place again. If you slid into this, and Dwarf Fortress was not available on Linux. You just it's have to keep still going. available on hold, Linux. Hold, 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 on hold up. Can, 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 can we slide to the alternate universe where I'm Jonathan Reese Davies instead? No, you're a traffic light. <laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah. Uh, but speak, speaking of uh, old games, KOTOR 2 and a bunch of other old games uh, like EverQuest 2 uh, no longer are going to be required to be running under experimental. You can run them under plain Jane Proton, which is nice. That hits very strange, man. Uh, one of my uh, roommates, I think it was my first, no, second roommate. In uni, uh, he was addicted to Ever, Evercrack, Everquest. That's all he played. This is then he immediately switched over. He, no, he he tasted Eve. Then he immediately went into Warhammer, not Warhammer, Warcraft. Yes, but his thing was like I will I'll run Linux, but I got to be able to play Ever. And I spent multiple weekends trying to get that to work. The wine back in the day never could. I lost one. I couldn't convert him. This was back you know early days when you were still trying to convince people to run Linux. I thought I'd share that story. Yeah, go to hell. Yeah. It's pretty good. Visibility. Is Visibility. We need to talk about. Yes, that that's always been one of the complaints of the uh, Steam client and people saying I can't get my game to be seen. Probably because marketing it's not very good. But uh, yeah, it's uh, Valve have always been very very cagey with what actually affects visibility of your game, what pushes it to the top of the rankings, what puts it on the front page. So they released a video, a video that they had to make because of the rampant misinformation, because Valve wasn't sharing exactly what was uh, giving some games yeah. more visibility. I mean, if you replace practice with advertising. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, Valve basically just had to go, okay. This, uh, they put a video together to show like the different bits of the front page. What is curated? What is uh, algorithmically um, curated. upheld? Curated. <laughs> yeah, they, they use curated as something different and uh, algorithm uh, generated, al- al- algorithmically collected, algorithmically presented. Yeah, it was something to do with algorithm, and they do say there is no one algorithm. Algorithms. There's multiple ones. Uh, so yeah, it is very broad strokes. The video is very broad strokes, and they do they do a breakdown of like the different areas of the front page okay this one is curated you have to hit certain things and this one the algorithm picks it up because people who play the same kind of games you do so that goes up to the top based on your own things so it is 
a necessity and uh, <laughs> it's it, it's a watch there's not any kind of particularly juicy information but at least it's something all right <laughs> this thing's 25 minutes long and i said watch the whole thing yeah. i couldn't do it i try i tried but i got I, I had other I, shit I, to do I, I took one for team linux game cast i'm like okay i need to have some data points on this other than video go burr uh so what do we got? them go burr that's the point apparently <laughs> things that are not a factor in your store ranking some of them kind of surprising though a little bit uh page traffic how many people are visiting your uh page Probably don't give a damn <laughs> like whatever few many review score sometimes doesn't affect the algorithm now when they say sometimes they make it a point to say it will affect recommendations so the recommendation engine will not be as quick to recommend it to people who are enjoying that negative genre mm-hmm. if you don't have you know neutral to positive reviews another thing i like that they blew this fucking myth out of the water so i can go back to ex- wish list all right so yeah that that because i man nothing drives me up the wall <laughs> like somebody going i'm upset with this developer i've removed it from my wish list I'm like to be fair that does affect one of the charts it's like the um top upcoming the games that aren't actually released, uh, that is based on the amount of wish lists. In fact, that is the only metric that affects that. Show me that in writing. <laughs> That's what they said in the video. <laughs> I, Show uh, me in the in yeah, the, in I, the I need captions. it in writing, Pedro. Did I, I, in, I did not make that in, clear. I don't need it in the video. <laughs> in the Google-generated closed captions. Jesus, I, I, think, I, think the link, I think it's one of the links in the description is the Steamworks uh, website to the visibility, which is basically the breakdown that they did in the video, but in text. So <laughs> another thing you got to do is early access. That's not going to help you. with uh, If you put your project into early access, that's cool. Valve wants to make it very clear. That's for you to prototype your game. You're not going to get any extra marketing ju- mojo out of that whatsoever. And that's also going to prevent you from showing up on the new and trending category when you're in early access. You can't have both. Mm. Keep that in mind. Now, the one thing that will most definitely 100% affect that little steamy algorithm and promoting your game is localization. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Like, they put a point on it. And they're like, that yeah. means more people from more countries can give us money. Yeah. If, <laughs> p- people yeah. who will, we, we will sell the games to people who can actually like right. read and we play the games. We get more of those 30% cuts if you make it, you know, properly local. Just don't use AI, by the way, we're about, Um, Yeah, really, that's well, well, I mean, I appreciate you having to make this very surface level thing, but I think anybody's serious into game development and is familiar with valve familiar with steam familiar with how the game's played this is a 25 minute long video with uh, no explanation no real explanation of how things actually work because valve can't do that well, because the second cause... they do that people will immediately start gaining the absolute hell out of it sorry jordan i wanted to finish my sentence sure also algorithm go burr a lot of this is as as valve is often wants to say they, they do a lot of experiments with like the the steam uh like steam workshop experiments i don't lots. think it's as bad as youtube youtube i genuinely do not believe they understand how it works at this point no no, no oh, oh yeah you, you youtube is a complete back black box i w- i would i would say that like valve is like 50 percent black box there there is there is a transparent component and then they hand it off to the algorithm and then that does some shit and, and i also want to point this out let's let's get, let's get some uh, sample sizes here valve recommendations suck they fail they fail hard. I've never had a recommendation from like, oh, because you've liked this game. I'm like, what the hell is this foot simi? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> they, uh, they, they also mentioned that in the video. The tags. That's what they use to make those recommendations. If you do like the, uh, the queue thing that they have in the store where they just give you 10 recommendations and you grade that. It's like, I like this. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. So on and so forth. Then it will tune the algorithm for you on what recommendations it makes. If you never do that, it just goes so, off the tag. So oh, you played a game with that, these tags? I, I remember doing that when it was originally in labs. Mm-hmm. And still eat shit. <laughs> and yeah, like, now, uh, if you never do that, it just goes, oh, okay, so you played a game with, you know, RPG, action, adventure. Okay, so I'm going to show you just games that have those tags, which Dark, are... Just Dark Souls clones. 90% yeah. of them. 
<laughs> uh, and, and like, uh, again, there, there's, there's also an audience disconnect because like none of us like spend a lot of time in Steam, looking through Steam, engaging with the community. Uh, there, there are people who do that. Um, and I don't know, for, for me, a lot of like a lot of game discovery comes from just the media, not from Steam itself, but from like developers going out to like Let's Players and saying like, hey, Twitch stream streamers. my game. Yeah, exactly. YouTube videos. YouTubers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and to, to your to your point earlier, that's that's where your advertising budget needs to be. You need to get people playing your game in front of other people so they can see how fun it is or how fun it isn't is it isn't or if, right. it, if it matches um, up with if you want your takeaway from this is no no amount of like buzz is a replacement for, you know, foot on ground, talking to people, being part of a yep. community, posting on Reddit, posting on, you know, getting in contact with Twitch streamers, YouTubers, and more importantly than all that, you gotta have a fun game. Yeah, it's it's gotta be good. It's gotta have a hook to it. I mean, and this is why it's like very super critical to make sure that you get feedback from outside of friends and family. Because and, friends and family and, don't want to hurt your feelings. And they're gonna tell you like, oh, that's impressive. That's excellent. And then when it hits uh certain you know, contact with enemy, they're like, This is dog shit, it's completely broken. What were you even thinking about? You're like, oh, nobody and, said and, this. It's it's writing 101 too. Don't be afraid to kill your your darlings. Just because you have the perfect idea of something doesn't mean that it's actually going to work when other people engage with it, right? Some sometimes it's sometimes it seems like a really good idea, and you're 100 percent that like no, uh, the the children are wrong. I'm right. No, it's like no, no, you're wrong. That makes sense. Yeah, not sometimes you will just get shit luck mm -hmm. because you yep. will release a game that is good. And you will have done the marketing and you will have done everything and you still get no visibility. We've all seen it. Everybody listening, watching, um, you, you've run across that game on Steam. You're like, this is a polished double A looking thing. It's got a great soundtrack. It plays well. And it's got like 53 reviews. Mm -hmm. You're like, what happened here? Because, I mean, that is your, my first reaction, I guess I should say for me. It's like, what went wrong? It's like, what did the developer do? <laughs> Right. And, and, what happened? <laughs> and like, and a lot of times it's nothing. It's just the fact that there are, are too many games out. Like, the, the the great thing is there's always there's going to be something that will scratch your particular itch. But there's just so much. And we stuff. have like the mystery fail games. Remember that um, the uh, racing painting game. On oh yeah, you where paint you like yeah, paint, paint mm -hmm. the track and yeah, yeah like yeah. it was again like double A. Well, if I had a soundtrack, had a character, they were clearly working on something, just disappeared. Mm. They just quit updating it. We'd never know. I mean, it's not a, not as fun as Crazy Justice, which I still want to know the full story on. It's crazy. <laughs> that yeah. was clearly someone looking to make bank out of fig. <laughs> I, I, I guess that was a weird pop and dump. All right, so let's talk about a couple of the new games that have come out this week on Steam. Baba, no, don't pull the lever. It's a trolley. <laughs> Dilemma. That's right. Not a dilemma, a dilemma. This is pretty cool, man. Uh, this was originally created as part of the Ludnum Dare 50, with the theme being delay the inevitable. Like, okay, that's pretty dope. And games about the trolley dilemma have existed forever, since the inception of the concept of the trolley dilemma. But they usually take the form of text adventure games. And, you know, Python little games, and you can find them all over GitHub and around but this one's a different take, you know. This is throwing a GUI on it and uh, arranging tracks to save people and confuse trolleys. So I'm pretty <laughs> down with that. If you're watching the video version, yeah, Jordan's 100% spot on. If you like the Baba art style, this was, I don't want to say, you know, you, you have parallel thinking, but and maybe inspired by Baba. Mm. You wouldn't feel out of place if this showed up on, like, Baba DLC is what I'm getting <laughs> at. Also, it's made in Godot. And on top of that, native linux version completely free to play yeah and it's open yeah, source it is very much baba is less about the moral quandary and more about just the ideal outcome because want, you are want, just looking to avoid killing everyone <laughs> see I, I i want baba murders five people to save one or baba <laughs> finds a way to murder all six people simultaneously well that's my yeah. thing my first thought is like how do i maximize the murder here yeah, that's, that's uh, <laughs> Michael from The Good Place. It's like, I have a solution. You hold, you you stick a machete at the end of a stick and you ride the trolley down one so you can decapitate all five of the other ones while you're running over the first guy. Yeah. I solved it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, this this is a short game, though. They're saying that it's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how smart you are. So, but I, again, 
for for a game about like fucking around with the trolley problem probably has about like 30 Dear minutes Baba of value I, I want that to be added to the Baba is you page this is a short <laughs> game taking around 30 I, to 40 minutes I, I still want to I still want to try Baba Doom I didn't try that one Baba Doom what's where, that yeah where they they just straight up made Doom in Baba is you oh jeez <laughs> No man, um, they they have, they have like a, a mod for like a first person block, so you can be like Baba is first person. I have nothing but respect for games that just flat out lay it on the table that they're smarter than me, and that is one of those games. Like, I I will gladly watch Jordan and Sandy scream and suffer. I will not touch that anymore. Like I've already <laughs> you've already hurt me. You hurt my brain. Yeah. Or, or like some Steven Sauces roll shit of like. Why is this game thirty dollars? Oh, because I'm not going to be able to solve yeah. it within like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> this, like, this is such a hard fucking game. <laughs> you'll get thirty dollars of a, my puzzles smarter than you are out of this. I'm like, yes, yes, you will. Yeah, no, <laughs> yes. Yeah. A genre I, I, that's kind of this game is better than me. <laughs> over the years, something we don't see a lot of, but it's not completely gone. It's dungeon crawlers, and if you come from the DOS ages like myself, you're like, those were amazing back in the day, you know, because we went from text adventures. Some graphics, one frame at a time, but it was very immersive, all things considered. Ludus Mortis wants to continue. Death at- game. Oh, dude, did you listen to the soundtrack for this game? No, dude, you. Uh, it is a uh, pretty OP for the genre game, man. It's pretty <laughs> fucking intense, man. This is a new game from the minds behind Seventh Circle, or the mind behind turn-based, of course. Background music for that Steam trailer, as I said. It is heavy even for the genre. Also, the dice don't animate when you throw them. I noticed that. I'm sorry. Now, this, the plot of this, and it's your, it's your dungeon crawler. You know, you click through the dungeon and you swipe and you kill the things. This involves a Roman Senate and necromancy. So Neck romancy. <laughs> it's going to 100% Zoom involve going, it's going to have dating sim elements. Guaranteed. So. Yeah, it, it yeah. looks legit for the aesthetic that they were going for. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, like. no, I'm, I'm, I'm always down to see more Eye of the Beholder likes. It, it, it is certainly like a, a genre of game that has its fans and is certainly kind of obtuse. I have some nostalgia for it. I played a lot of like Eye of the Beholder and Pool of Radiance back in the day because I got it. I got them all cheap. I talked about in the pre pre super chosen, but yeah. Uh, so I'm always down to see more of this stuff. And yeah, it, it, it looks pretty cool. Uh, on, honestly. Um, Pedro does. Yeah, like it. I like. Pedro's liked. a party pooper. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'm party really glad pooper. that we've evolved past uh, these dungeon crawlers and onto full on action RPGs. Yes, the Elder Scrolls, yep. the Dark Souls. Would, would, would you like it if you could dodge roll in this game? I was about to say, what if they have a roll mechanic? <laughs> <laughs> I I would like it if it was like Morrowind. Uh, th- just let me have the freedom of movement. Let me have my agency as a player. Uh, it's though, yeah, no. For all their flaws, Dark Souls and Elder Scrolls did a very good job moving the uh, genre forward. And as much as I liked Reg- Legend of Grimrock. Uh, and I didn't like the fact that they decided to drop the Linux version for Grimrock 2, otherwise I would have played it. Uh, but it's, that was a novelty. That was, hey, it's a retro-inspired game, but with modernish graphics. I, I wouldn't necessarily want to play more of it anymore. <laughs> well, I think, I think if you update the game systems and you add, like, modern conveniences like auto-mapping and, like, lore being directly implemented into the game, I think, I think like, a lot of... Yeah, I, I think no. Uh, I think, but I, yeah, yeah. Some, some, some. Uh, you, you just gotta get the neural link chip in your brain, and you can have, you can just like See, enter that's, mist that's mode. Where that's where you're messing up. I'm putting that neural link in my toes. Well, I, I, I put it up my butt. Okay, so no spinal tap, toe tap. <laughs> my toes will be shifty as hell, man. They will hack your shit. It'll, it'll, they'll be, yep. my, my toes will be wearing hoodies. Oh no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone and talk about Jackbox Party Pack 10, the 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 newest game in the Jackbox franchise. Fun little party games, mini games for you. Hopefully, this one can break the streak of having 50% games that you play once and go, yeah, let's not do that again. And some remakes of some classic ones. We're getting a new TKO. That's a solid game, so I'm a fan of that. Uh, the typo fixing one looks like it could be fun, and that's one that's included in the demo that we're gonna be trying out after this. Done podcast is report recording. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I do like me some trivia, though. Uh, they have the new trivia game. I, that one I want to try. <laughs> That's a Jackbox Party Pack with a 10 after it. Mm-hmm. Gotta go back in time. <laughs> I mean, if it, if they keep doing it and introducing just enough stuff, even if it is just half the games, people are probably gonna keep playing. <laughs> I would, I would like the Jackbox Ultimate Pack that just has like all of the games in like one thing, as opposed to like having to having to like ha- remember like, oh, Jackbox Three has Fibbage Two and all that other crap. Oh, right? is that the death knell when they finally decide, isn't it? No, we're done, and they just release the one game with everything. See, no. this is one that you would think would supo- better support like a DLC model, where you just like every every year we would just release a new tech. Well, both game. of you are, seem to be unfamiliar with the like re- re- release model because not only do you get the party packs, you also get the individual games available for purchase piecemeal, mm-hmm. yeah. which is a time honored mm-hmm. tradition with the Jackbox. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what you can do if you can't wait, you just buy the entire party pack. You just wait around. And they'll eventually drip out individually, and they'll be like, you know, four ninety nine, seven ninety nine, or something like that. They all have like unique launchers, though. Like it would each start up in their own, like yeah, they're games individual games. games. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, if you're wondering, you know, with the demo, it's still seven twenty p when you go to windowed mode, but it's choose your own adventure. You can slide that around and move it around. Native Linux ports, no worries there. And, you know, everything's vector these days, so you don't have to worry about the pixelated graphics. What do you get in the demo? As Jordan said, you get the T- you don't get the TKO. What do we get? We get a rhythm game and a typing game, which is apparently some type of battle royale typing or something. Interesting. We'll find out in the after show. But we need to talk about three minutes to eight because hipster pixels done hipster pixeling. Yeah, this is uh, builds itself as a mind bending pixel art adventure. The short version is. You know that you're going to die at uh, 7.57 p.m. And you have a certain amount of time to undo your fate. And apparently every time you play the game, uh, things can uh, go out, uh, happen differently. So the idea here is there's a lot of different permutations that you can go through. Gives you a lot of replay value. Um, It's got a demo. I didn't get a chance to play it this week. So you can check it out and see if that is something that is your speed. It's certainly trying to like obfuscate what it is about the, all the, all the, ad, all the advertising copy is like redacted and there's like weird br- broken clock gifs that they stole from like Someone really likes the SCP and... foundation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots I mean, have you ever like sat back and thought to yourself, man, I really want to play David Tennant in pixel format. Then pull shit. And there's your cyberpunk 2d right there. What's this thing going to cost? We don't know. Cause it doesn't come out until the 23rd. Aww. That's a couple of weeks. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> what is yeah, it? it? It's a point and click, though. So. Processor. Of course it is. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an adventure game. What yeah. did you want? Action RPG? N- needs more dodge roll. Battle Royale? <laughs> I could do what, what, without what, what, the Battle Royale. What the if action it was like adventure, a the RPG, the I mean, hack I, and I slash. could say the same thing about sure. Cyberpunk if you give me enough wiggle room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know. You could it. apply the action adventure genre to 99% of video games. <laughs> Maybe you're looking it's, at it. I like the aesthetic of it. You know, it's, it's got the look. It looks the business. If you like something like, uh, what was the clown game um, from um, Thimbleweed oh, Park? Oh, uh, Thimbleweed Park. Yeah. If mm-hmm. More like, like uh, Beneath a beneath a Steel Sky. Things that are done that well, you will probably appreciate this. It's got a demo. Mm-hmm. Go play with it. Share your thoughts now. Mild swearing. Not swearing's acceptable. Up next, Nor Nori, yeah, yeah, Norea, Norea, Norea. It's the gold project. <laughs> Venture into a frantic Metroid. Oh, I love it already. Metroidvania. You fight. You got a sword. Listen, this is Stabavania. Don't don't let the intro art. It's hipster pixel, but stay with me. Stay with me because it's kind of fun. I mean, it's hundred percent slashy Stabavania. I, there's a demo. Go download it. Go play with it. Controls are absolutely serviceable. I played it with the Xclone 360. No way to get rid of V Sync. You need to fix that shit. <laughs> you, you you got a action fuck you hard platformer. I need to be able to cut off V Sync, please. Now the uh, graphics kind of remind me of uh, Dead Cells a little bit. The art style. It's got that blasphemous uh kind of theme going on with it uh very well done except for some all the enemies are like shadow types but hey you know it's it, it sticks with the That's art one style way to not have to do character design the um 
demo is Windows <laughs> only. So you download it, it thinks it's a Linux, but it just links to an empty Linux depot, so you still got to smash that Proton button. But mm. the movement, really fluid. It's very fast with the attacks. Um, your pixel tagging is, is a wee small. There's no zoom there, so you got to play in this little wee tiny person, which is, I guess is all right. And uh, you, you get a little scarf to make you not character blind. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the red scarf DLC that is kind of I, I mean, you're <laughs> exceptionally tiny uh, compared to the rest of the screen. And I got about 20 minutes in the demo. You know, I didn't rage quit from it, but like after 20 minutes, I, I didn't see any like upgrades or anything to that effect. I'm like, I, I kind of want something to keep me interested to keep me going so this thing's not coming out until november 7th and it's still early access they've been working on it for a long time hope it works out look you can click and add to your wish list and that'll and it does nothing <laughs> you lose good day can you sir. imagine that somebody be like do you know how long it took me to make that calf <laughs> i have a theory it's all been the same gift just getting reprocessed over and over and over because you look at them these days it's looking rough this is quite quite the bit rot. Yeah, copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you're a fan of Hollow Knight, that's always my metric. Try this out. It's not Hollow Knight. I pray to flying spaghetti monster. They don't price it out of existence <laughs> by making it more than Hollow Knight because you got to work that into the equation of like it's more than is it better than Hollow Knight? No. Then people are just gonna fucking buy Hollow Knight. I mean, every, every, everything costs fifty nine ninety nine, sixty nine ninety nine now. Uh. Uh, Extranium doesn't. Extranium does not. In fact, Extranium is ten pounds exactly. Um, and so, it looks it. <laughs> it's, it's cutie doom. Uh, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's getting ready for one point They say that, that they've been working on this for a while now, and uh, they released the f- uh, like the interim episode during uh, Realms Deep, which happened last uh, weekend, if I'm not mistaken. And you can play, like, the interim uh, episode, and they will have episode 2 finished at some point, and the proper 1.0 version will be coming out next year, which I very much enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I very much enjoyed what I've played of it thus far, and I'm not going to play any more until 1.0 is out, so I can play the whole thing. So it's Linux native boom shoot. It's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. (laughs) Expected to be f- coming out in quote unquote May 2024. Mm-hmm. They're given the end of the year, which is only like a couple months away for the release of episode two. If you want to try that out, this this one this one's been on the store for a while, and it's like uh, I, I I don't I don't know. It seems like it's been in early access for a good long while. Maybe I don't I don't know. Do you, do you think it's worth it for like episodic games to be in early access? No. Would it make more sense to like? release episode one and just be like, hey, and episode two, three, four, whatever is coming later. Yeah, I, if it's episodic, just make it episodic. Don't don't yeah. double dip on the uh, <laughs> early access. Like, episodic's like, somebody wants it, like, piecemeal. Like, there is a market for the people who just can't wait. Like, you're, you're gonna get those nibbles, man, but, like, how much feedback do you really want? Like, if you're like that fluid with your story, right? Unless you just get, like, a hard plan laid down. I don't know, does Extranium have a story? I don't think so. Uh, Is it you're, a security, you're a security officer uh, at a corporation, and then uh, shit goes down. That's yeah, the extent I mean, of the I'll, story I'll, that I've seen. <laughs> I mean, yeah, a, a lot of early shooters are just like, you are a shooty man, have gun, go shoot. No, a motherfucker, yes. sometimes you get a pet rabbit. Sometimes, you, sometimes <laughs> they kill your rabbit, yeah. And then the aliens now, come to Earth and they kill your rabbit, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, but that, that, that was the sequel. <laughs> Listen, man, the 90s were a different time. It was tough. It was tough to be a protagonist with a gun in the 90s. What, what, was it tough to be a professional wrestler in the 90s? Not really, no. All things considered. I mean, much better drugs. Uh, what do we got? Check this out. Is it a bird? Kick its ass. Patch 1214. Our audio listeners, this is going to be kind of surprising to you. Gang Beast. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. We're talking about, like, this game's been around literally forever. It really has. Uh, Double Fine was actually a publisher this came up until 2020. Then something strange happened at Double Fine. Uh, then they no longer were. I'm not sure. Anyway, Bone Loaf was the original creator for this. Still are. Turns out that they used a bunch of scripts and tools from the Unity Asset Store to make this game. 
which yeah. should come as a surprise to no one <laughs> if you've played it. Uh, and they're like, yeah, it was good for rapid prototyping and getting everything stuck together. Then they just ship that, put it on the store. And it's kind of been there ever since, completely they unloved. Hit- they handed it to a bunch of contractors. I was surprised when they were saying, like, yeah, we, we, there, there were a lot of external development partners, which means they didn't really do much beyond the initial phase. All the, all the new networking, uh, all, all of the bug fixes and stuff has been uh, from a contractor, which they have switched now. And now that that has done, they're saying that more updates are going to be coming soon, I guess. Well, this new I- patch brings a bunch of those new updates. And... Everything's going to be welcome with this because what Gang Beast has been every time, like it's barely a semi-functional tech demo. Always has been. Jordan, did you know this though? What? Gang Beast ships its own standalone server. I did not. That's that's, that's good to hear good. though. Credit where credits yeah. too. <laughs> well, Being able like, to play the game it, even after the master server goes down is very good. Well, like, especially considering that, like, a lot of the Unity, like, networking stuff is just, like, using their built-in shit, right? Like, mm-hmm. so, like, ha- having having a uh, dedicated server option is certainly a non-standard thing, as far as I'm aware. The only thing I worry about is, as to what Jordan pointed out, having a bunch of external developers, like, they can't really promise anything with this. It's just whatever they have available and the people that they can get to do it. Yeah, apparently they did re- re-engineer a bunch of their backend, though. They have, like, CI, and they have, like, uh, they have like te- they have automated testing now. So they're saying, hopefully, now that all this stuff is in place, they can better iterate on stuff, and they'll have an easier time when they need to switch contractors again, as opposed to just, you know, taking the money they ostensibly made from this team and hiring. <sighs> yeah, uh, or, yeah so, right, uh, have, having your own team. That, that's weird when you hear, of like, developers. But, like, do, do you have anybody? Like, no, 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 we're the idea guys. Yeah, we, we, we farmed it out to a dev shop. Yeah. Ah. Uh, that sounds expensive, doesn't it? A little bit. Mm. It, it, it sounds expensive and unreliable. That's usually that's yeah. usually my experience <laughs> with with the, that sort of contracting is like, yeah, it technically works, and then you look at stop watching it, and then it immediately crumbles. <laughs> this next update we can technically talk about because they open sourced it. They did quack. Quack, quack. Uh, they have update one uh, coming out for Quake 2, the Beth Mastered edition. Uh, they've added some stuff like quick saves and online co-op, which is super handy. Um, <laughs> because we need to cheese a lot because we die a shit ton. Also, in multiplayer uh, versus, spawn furthest by default is enabled. Is that a thing that we can enable in co-op? Because we've been, it, periodically in the after show, we've been going through Quake 2. I Part of the charm versus. is dying 19 times. 19 times once you load into the new map. So yes. have, if they, can we, can we like fix that, please? I looked through the notes. There's like, this is the closest thing I found to a mention of that. Oh, oh shit. Hopefully. Look at this. Look at this. You can play a uh, PC yeah, and cro- Xbox consoles on, on the LAN. Just no, just don't do Wi-Fi versus wired. You're no, gonna dude, force time. them to play with a controller and wreck their ass. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pedro, what have they done to my baby? Uh, the, <laughs> the rail gun damage. It, it was increased. So it now, jibs things properly uh w- the the thing that stuck out to me wasn't even the rail again it was the trespasser uh the uh, the berserker they finally made the berserker a threat with the new jump attack and how much damage it dealt and how big the area of effect was and even if you jumped you still got even if you didn't take any damage you still got knocked back a little bit it was a threat they made the trespasser a threat and now they've nerfed him again. What the fuck? <laughs> Can you just was, leave was, the poor too berserker hard. alone? Listen, it was too like, hard. And, yeah, and un- un- unlike from software, they're like, don't get good. We'll fix the game for you. <laughs> you could have left it and just added a dodge roll mechanic. <laughs> that, I mean, that's all you need for like Pedro to be happy. Like dodge you could roll. be playing Cooking Mama, and if you add dodge rolling to Cooking Mama, he would be he would be so pleased. Isn't there a roll? move that you can do in Cooking no, it's something Mama you can get, serve, but, but, though, but you, but you listen, don't, but you I, don't I, dodge. I, can, I have a recipe for <laughs> okay. my dodge roll. <laughs> yeah. Dodge rolls. Do- dodge ram rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe Quake 2 is uh, just a little too new school for your taste. And you want something a bit more retro. <laughs> you want something that's uh, full on 2D looking like 3D. Like, uh, Duke. Uh, and this one is Ion Fury, actually. It's the new, um, Aftershock expansion. Oh, how low can I go with the uh, video? 
There we go. 144p, yes. baby. There we go. <laughs> oh, my God. Hipster Pixel. Yeah, the the new expansion for uh, uh, Ion Fury is out. It, uh, again, another thing that came out during Realms Deep. Seriously, Boomer Shooter Con, if you're not... Uh, if you like boomer shooters, you need to watch Realms Deep. There's always a bunch of really nice stuff coming out of that. And uh, this one brings stuff like you'd expect expansion packs to do. There's another campaign. There's um, new weapons, new enemies, new zones. There's a range mode, which um, it lets you play with the new stuff, the new enemies, the new weapons, everything else. But it, the original campaign. So... That's at, at it. I'm kind of curious. Did the fine, fine folks at Void Point uh, go down the realm of obsession to balance the new weapons and the new enemies on the old levels? I wouldn't put it past them because attention to detail is something that they do very, very well. But um, at the same time, you might be just woefully overpowered <laughs> going through the original campaign with the new weapons. So it, worth a worth a shot. <laughs> I grew up playing these damn games, making levels for these damn games. I'm done with these damn games. I played that game <laughs> when it first came out, and I'm like, I played this game before for hundreds of hours. I'm good. Bye. You can get a 10% off right now uh, if you if you're not uh, done with the genre yet. It's uh, ten pound twenty five here for just the expansion. If you already Man, have I was the done game, with this genre for the nineties, we're done. <laughs> I I like boom shoots. I I, I like boom shoots. I moved on. Quick. <laughs> Quick is a boom shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about fully 3D games. I should say tech wise because I was making more maps than anything else. Jordan has the, no the, opinion. The on thing this I I made the most maps for was never Winter Nights. In fact. There were a couple of servers <laughs> that had quite a few players that had a few areas done by myself. Oh, man. I made a lot <laughs> how of long did it take till they shut back down? The they just... uh, mostly until the original uh, master server for the original game shut down. That's when those servers went away. How many servers are still up for Neverwinter Nights? There's a bunch on uh, Steam, too. So yeah. <laughs> A bunch of servers on Steam? Yeah, like a... Like yeah, a like they a, give you the dedicated server with the game, so you can just run your own. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's accessible through like the Steam uh, intranet, right? Because you can oh, register. That's pretty it. dope. Yeah, that's you can pretty. You can right click yeah. join people. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, if you still have a crippling Neverwinter Nights addiction, uh, Intel has made a card that just might be able to help you out because <laughs> that's about all the A five eighty is going to be able to give you. That and fucking Elf on the box. That Elf better show up on the box video cards. You're dead to me. <laughs> Mark five eighty. This is this card is meant to fill the uh, cherished, the ever sought after price gap between one hundred and thirty nine dollars and two hundred and thirty nine dollars. Now this was uh, a fish. Oh, yeah. Yes, Jordan's fine. Oh, uh, no, it's just like right, right between that A three eighty and that A seven fifty. You know, people people have been champing at the bit for that. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, I I need slightly more than an encoder card. This, that can push this is why everyone. This is why this has been such a massive decline in uh, GPU purchases over the past several months. Because of this particular gap. Now, officially announced last year, we were told about this way back in the old times. And I'm like, yeah, this is going to come out. Well, here it is. 185 watt card. Now, originally it was going to be 175 watts, which was still a lot for this low end card. And they've decided that we're going to have to put an extra 10 watts on top of that just to get it up to, uh, to make it a competitor. They'll tell you about, uh, Pedro will tell you about what it competes with in a minute. What do you get? You get 24 Z cores and 24 ray tracing units, along with 8 gigs of RAM, though, so that's not going to be bad. And 512 bus widths. What is this thing meant to take out, to take down, to eviscerate Peter it's, Mateus? Uh, it's, uh, it seems that they're trying to go for the uh, RTX 3050 and the RX 6600, the non-XD version. I know what the 6600 can do because that's Nori's GPU, um, and yeah, that that's that's as uh, new cards go. That's a very good value to performance right now. And the RTX 3050 actually trades blows with the GTX 1080, except in DirectX 12 games where it's like twice as fast. But you know, that's that, that, 
Pascal. <laughs> yeah, and, and and like don't 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 you worry. N- Nvidia isn't shaking in their boots. They have plans for an even weaker card than the 3050. Six plus. gigabytes with 92 yeah. bit bus. Oh man, what what an odd what an odd sense. There are reports suggesting that Nvidia is working on an even less powerful RTX 3050 model. Like, why would you why would you report that? Why would you announce that? I don't know. And, and, but, but um, but uh, there is some good news too. Is that there are more uh, 770, 770s coming. So if you mm. want a sixteen gig uh, Intel card, there are going to be a couple of new AIB manufacturers that are going to be making them. And at least they have drivers this time. Oh, I mean, the drivers yes. have been around. I mean, a bit look at this though. You got to look at this. I mean, uh, for anything with Intel, at least they're throwing a wrench into the monkey. Because look at the memory bandwidth within these damn things. Their basic bitch budget card, and we're not counting the 310 and the 380. Those things are laptop parts. <laughs> Starting with this 580, 512 gig yeah. memory buzz on this thing, eight gigs of RAM, and it competes with the 3050, which is really the 2050. 30, 100. Yeah, it's it's fucking antique. 8800 so, GT. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, the um, well. I guess they don't even have to compete on the whole... It's technically only powered by the PCIe port, because even NVIDIA has given up on that. Uh, the last one to do that was... Well, the, they do have the new... Um, 4060. Low profile. No, the 4060 still requires the... Uh, oh, you're talking about PCI connected. Express only? Yeah, no. It's, the, it's one of the Quadros. It's the Quadro... Uh, something. The, the Quadro... <sighs> It's H H H H H C H C H C H. Yeah, it's the most powerful PCI uh, PCIe only powered GPU at the moment. And before that, it was the sixteen fifty. So that's the level of um, performance we're dealing with. Uh, if you want just PCIe only, and there's absolutely a market for like the one hundred and fifty dollar price range. That's where the seven fifty. TI was priced at. That's where the 1050 TI was priced at. Can can we go back to that? No. no. The 2000. Thank Jen, you, Jen, Jen, Jensen's leather jacket needs to feed on the blood of orphans, and those orphans aren't cheap. Uh, but like the but speaking of the the market is in a good place right now for Nvidia, where they can release these weaker cards or not Nvidia, sorry Intel, where they can release these bigger these weaker cards, and like their competition isn't that great, so they can they have they have some breathing room, they have some time to catch up still. It's not even a competition problem. That's not the problem anymore. It's uh, neither AMD or NVIDIA want to cater to the low end market at all, period. Like, there's like, yeah. that's dead to us. Because why? Because they got a taste of $1,200 freaking video cards. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. It, they, they got a taste from that with crypto. AI is now uh, suck, sucking up those cards as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, what's your bill of material with that? Uh, well, we saw that with the A770. Battery Vidi for 16 gig card to ship. That's everything baked in. Do you think NVIDIA even has to spend that much money to ship out of 4090? No. <laughs> no. So, um, yeah, you know what? It, it might not be the sexiest thing in the world, but you got your 770s and below, and we got Battle Mage. It could be a very respectable, more importantly, affordable, low to mid range solution going forward. And uh, everyone running out and buying $900,000 NVIDIA cards, more power to you. That's awesome. I don't have a problem with it. But for the rest of us plebes, it's good to have that option. And you know, and if, if you look at the like the Steam hardware survey, the most popular GPU still is the sixteen fifty. So come on, I, <laughs> we I, need a I would like progress on that. <laughs> I, w- I, w- I would like to see the arc crack into that. It isn't even broken out of other GPUs yet. So no. <laughs> I, I, I would like to see a l- little bit of progress. We 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 need that player three. But well, hey, I mean, it does boil down to be the change, though, right? Uh, speaking of, there's a change coming up in Mesa that's going to improve not your Intel Arc performance, but your Alder Lake IGPs. Is it going to improve the performance of GitLab? Ah, uh, no. The, <laughs> Damn, that site's slow. Oh my god. <laughs> l- l- let me just go on a, like a, man, GitLab has like so many open feature requests that are just like, here's some basic shit that we would need. And they're like, yeah, we'll get to it eventually. Uh, but but anyways, uh, this is from uh, the GitLab from uh, freedesktop.org from Mesa. Links to all this stuff in our show notes. Uh, but they are adding sparse Vulkan support for Alder Lake uh, IGPUs uh, using, uh, what was it, the T-TT 
on uh gen on the P on the gen 2 gpus which is uh which is uh, alder lake igpus and iris uh, gpus this is necessary to actually get directx 12 running and with it they have actually gotten some games working so that's nice there are still a lot of folks out there with just laptops with igpus and like being able to play any games at any performance level is is a win for that so it's nice to have, and maybe this will trickle into, trickle into the uh, into the arc stuff. But I'm pretty sure these are unrelated drivers. Well, you never know. I mean, having more eyes on the problem and like looking around as demonstrated in our pre pre super shows, and we're not 100 percent on what drivers the uh, arc uses. We we just kind of got guesses. Jill, yeah, you're, I know you're, it you're uses N V A N V for the Vulcan bits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Jill, what drivers that are your new video card using? Tell us. A 770 is going to um, run you to 350. Like, I really, really thought they'd be about 200 bucks on a part. That's yeah, we, 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 we played that game in the pre-pre-super shows, and it's, it's a collector's item now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pedro, you're both angered and confused by bottles, so this story's right up your alley. Uh, not particularly. In fact, uh, I think Bottles is a good project. It's just that I'm at the point with Lutris that it's like, okay, I understand Lutris enough that I'm willing to use it. So, and then Bottles shows up and is like, oh, okay, there's a new thing that does something similar, but for wine exclusively. Cool. All right. Well, now they're doing something I even more. I want play more. on Linux to kick in your door and be like, what happened, man? <laughs> Jython, <laughs> baby. Jython. It's been updated in 12 years. Something like that. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, the, no, it's the, the bottle team. They have bottles next up and coming. Uh, and they, apparently they decided, you know what? The Stark, uh, GTK based GUI that they had, uh, was, uh, not good enough. So they made a busier one and they, they took a lot of inspiration from the steam, uh, grid layout and the legendary, um, games client UI they look very, very similar. And, uh, yeah, they plan to restructure how bottles as software works at a more fundamental level, uh, not only just for the prefix management, but also to separate the GUI client from the underlying bits, which at that point, it, that just seems ripe for a Lutris integration. Just have bottles as a runner in Lutris that, <laughs> yeah. that would be yeah, a peak uh, open source there right there. <laughs> We're offering those two usage modes, this this is the big thing that's coming with bottles next, is that there's going to be the next mode, which shoves everything into one bottle and lets you have like, uh, and has like some minor isolation stuff, which, uh, but it's just to simplify everything. And then there is the legacy version, which is how it works right now, where you can have individual prefixes being managed. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you, do you think, do you think they'll be able to sort all the issues with running everything out of the same prefix? Cause usually that's why you set up the secondary ones. It's just to keep well, everything isolated. it depends on how they want to go about it. Like, do they want it to actually do that? Or do they just want the end user to have the experience that it is being run out of one? Uh, mm -hmm. No, the, 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 that's, what, that's what they say. <laughs> the, 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 they do say that it's just going to be a single prefix and that the legacy version is for managing multiple ones. So mm. although I, it, there is a way that you can set up, uh, let's say a game requires some DirectX uh, overrides or something and another game that just straight up doesn't work if you have those overrides set. There are ways you can have those DLLs outside the prefix itself. In fact, Lutris already does that if you enable DG Voodoo because the DLLs are actually in a separate folder outside of the actual wine prefix. Oh yeah, I'm so, sure there's like a ton of environment variable manipulation stuff mm -hmm. that you could do with like LED preload and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah so. It's just hard to sit back and think about like, what is, what is the best uh, wine manager in 2023 on you know, Steam? Like, what? Who do you think is going to be the first to get something close to like, because here's what Valve got right. They got right the fucking play button. Is, is this going to give you a closer <laughs> experience to like, yeah, I just want to click go. And then your game starts. And we also have to remember our brothers and sisters on Mac. That's becoming yeah. more and more of a tool for them as they realize that, yeah, you want to play your games? Well, you're going to have to jump through some hopes these days. Because it's like the old days. If you go read um, the Mac gaming subreddit, it looks like Linux underscore gaming from five years ago. Mm. It, it is some sad, miserable people 
very excited about anything that they can get. So I'm glad so, that this uh, is also working with Mac. Strider brings up an interesting point about how um, Lutris handles Epic Games Store or like the game specific stores like EA Play, where each store has their own distinct prefix, but they share all uh, games owning or belonging to that store under a single prefix. So I don't, I don't know. It, this this may just be like an artifact of we're old wine users and this is how it used to work, but they fixed it now, so it works yeah. better. Like you know, the, the less I know about how wine works, the better job everyone's doing. It, yeah, it's that XKCD comic, like, quality of life compared to how many times I need yeah. to open my xorg.com. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I do not have the time, desire, or energy to fuck around with wine like I did even 10 years ago. Like, I have no interest in doing that. I'm very much like, I just want to play the game. Can't play the game? Fuck the game. <laughs> very simple yeah. equation. I'm yeah, not alone Proton's in that. done very good for that. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. So, uh, so, so why don't you take a seat? You're using, you're using Unreal Engine 4? Why don't, you, why don't you take a seat? We need to talk about the Unreal Engine pricing changes. Uh, a little bit of bug bug. Oh, look at, look at, look at Peter's waifu up there. I missed a oh, he, look, he looks Timmy so sad. announcing that they're letting go a bunch of people. Yeah. It looks like he spent the last night sleeping on the couch because his wife kicked him out of bed. <laughs> now, if we're being fair, that this guy know what that dude looks like 24-7. No. <laughs> Tim Sweetie has uh, made an announcement couple of announcements uh says the company has begun running into a couple of financial problems about 10 weeks ago and you know he gave this little talk and you know this comes after laying off like 900 employees we talked about that uh so unreal's got some changes the engine itself they're going to be switching over to a per seat pricing model for non-game developers kind of important to throw that in and they were very clear like don't worry about this also that's going to be going into effect Next year, which is not very far away, Unreal is going to always, for the time being, until further notice, remain free for educators and students. So no worries there. But you got to think about this. You know, like, got, got to hook them early. Still, first one's always free. Right? Isn't that right, Apple? Get those. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You got to think about this. Is so. How does this affect anything? Every Disney show that you've watched is using Unreal. It just is. And a gang of movies. Like, I mean, it's turned into like a big tool for VFX and production. Uh, pro- prototyping as well. Automotive uses mm-hmm. it quite a bit. Um, the industrial side uh, of things, it's huge. Uh, VR mm-hmm. and all of that. And yeah. I think this is kind of big for Unreal because all of those studios, they were effectively just using Unreal Engine for free. Just download yeah, it. They're they're saying they're saying that they're primarily looking at like applying this pricing model to things that like don't sell units. Games ship units so they can collect mm-hmm. royalties. Their existing model doesn't account for that. So if you're not going to be making a thing that will ship units, they can take a cut off of. Then you got to pay potentially per seat or per site. Per seat, like them. Adobe, and yeah. you know I'm very sure that they would like to graduate this to software as a service or some model along that. But I, I think somebody at Epic, because we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, you know Epic's got a couple of revenue streams. But I think somebody just made the point of like when Fork Knife goes under or takes a big dip, like that's it. That's the company. Mm-hmm. And they don't want to lean on that. You know, they, they want to have those additional revenue streams. And that's a big gaping, you know, as I was talking about a couple of weeks ago, it's like it's a dipshit business model where they have that set up. It has to be propped up with something else because you have all of these companies. You have Disney for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, companies upstart. with massive yeah. amounts of money R- just not R- paying anything. Right. I mean, Raspberry Pi figured that shit out. <laughs> they, they went to Disney and they're like, "Hey, let's, why don't you why don't you cut us a little check here and we'll uh, we'll take care of you." Oh man. Uh, so yeah, if you're a game developer, you don't have to worry about this. But I want to pause at this bit because what do you think? Um, I, I kind of got to feel like this announcement probably also included something for game developers as well until Unity just went out and. Scorched Earth, <laughs> that idea. Yeah, they, they point that out like the very first sentence is uh, okay. Everyone's kind of aware of the Unity runtime fee thing, so here's the thing: this doesn't affect the gaming side very much at all. And they they are also very quick to point out the the EULA that you are uh, you have to abide by is the one of the version of the engine you're using. That's it. You don't Go. get to uh, magically be affected by a new EULA that you didn't agree to because uh, someone removed the EULA from the uh, GitHub repo. 
So, so someone updated the EULA to say that we can amend the EULA at any point and then removed it from the GitHub repo. Um, yes. But like, yeah, uh, to, to, to Ven's point, um, Fortnite has been uh, propping up a lot of the Epic Games stuff. And yeah, for, for now, the supply, the, these sorts of restrictions are going to be rep- applying to non-gaming applications. But I imagine other stuff like free games and all that stuff is going to start going the way of the Dodo as well as Epic continues to tighten free their Free MMOs and whatnot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 were, they were trying to drive traffic to their store by giving away a bunch of free shit. Maybe now they have to actually invest their money in making their store not suck. We could sell some more hats, Jordan. <laughs> maybe, maybe i don't know i i in my heart of hearts i believe that like this type of announcement that that entire announcement the beginning of it had to be rewritten we're like okay so we're not going to do anything with game developers right now <laughs> that would mm-hmm. be very bad yeah. optics yeah however i'm very much inclined to believe as i'm sure as anybody sitting there there's probably some changes coming for the game dev crowd for unity right. it, it depends it depends on how the spiral is they're going to squeeze where they can squeeze and they're going for the obvious one right now, the one that anybody's looking at. I'm like, why aren't you charging for that? Like, oh, but then again, it's kind of a smart move, you know, give it away for free. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, get it embedded, again, like, get an ecosystem built around production mm-hmm. houses using it, and they're like, that's going to cost and you now. No, it costs you money. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it worked pr- relatively well for Unity up until they tried to change the pricing too aggressively. Well, they wanted time machine pricing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That, 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 that's it, right? They, they, right. They, they, they got the Mr. Fusion and the DeLorean loaded up, and they're just like, we got to go back in time, that, That's going to be studied by MBAs of like, okay, this is where the fucking line is. Because you know what? They could have gotten away with it, and they're pesky dog, too, if they hadn't have done even mentioned retroactive anything. Mm. Yes. If Unity had come out and said, <laughs> all right, next version of Unity, anything made for people would bitch, people would be angry. But it wouldn't have been anything like what we experienced. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I, oh, I still think they delve they too the, deeply. <laughs> I, yeah, I still think they, they, they made the really greedy first uh, push to see if it would stick, and when it didn't, it's like okay, let's go with the reasonable one that we actually wanted to do in the first place. And, well, uh, well, it, it, it backfired <laughs> tremendously, right? Like I don't think yeah, any new projects. The, they killed the going trust forward. in the company. Yeah. No one fucking trusts yeah. Unity yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No and and it doesn't even. It doesn't matter what they say. Place. Because it's like, well, we, we've, we've just proven that we're going to just change our minds whenever we want. So, yeah. uh, And we're willing to dick everyone over. So another <laughs> thing before we get done with the epic topic, I want to bring out uh, Steam Spy Creator. I heard of him. Ser- Sergey. Yeah. Sergey. <laughs> He's just like us. Uh, my last day at Epic Games. He's been there for eight years. Uh, you know, helped build Epic 4.0 and... Uh, He's been, you know, it's like I had a good time, launched Fortnite, became one of those self-reinforced, he didn't expect all that. Now Epic Games is on its way to transforming from a game developer, engine creator, and and publisher into a platform, Epic 5.0. I'm not a good fit with this version of Epic. It requires people of a different kind. Of a different kind. So, uh, yeah, he, he just kind of left. He's like, I don't like the way things are... Uh, Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, I don't like where this is going. He doesn't I'll... think he's compatible with it, or would be <laughs> of. Um... Yeah, uh, he, uh, maybe they just are out of data for him to scrape. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. He does I... say he does say that he wants to stay in the games industry. So very much looking mm. forward to what he does next. It would be um, very interesting if Valve gobbled him up. They're just like, hey, yeah. why don't you, uh, why don't you <laughs> so come you, over here? You want to make that uh, Steam Spy thing official? Yeah. Here. <laughs> um, how long has it been since Steam Spy like worked? Couple of years. They, they, they changed. The, they changed their API, right? That was yeah. The, like I mean, it's been dead for like two or three years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some, they something made like it. That. Uh, it was when they changed how the like you could see uh, the games that people had to only when people made the um, their community profile public. So mm-hmm. anything that was like friends only or just private couldn't see anything out of it. So that basically skewed the numbers a bunch. Oh. Right. <laughs> One last thing before we get out of here. Oh, before we get to the email. Never mind. The Jadungeon. Jadungeon. It's not, it has nothing to do with space rhinos at all. <laughs> Every time I see that, I want to say Jadoon, but it's Jadungeon. Uh, it is a open source uh, MMORPG done in Godot. Um, it is still heavily in development, though, uh, and unlike a lot of the other MMOs we talk about lately, 
This one is not browser-based, so you will need to run a client and you will need to run a server if you go to their GitHub page. They actually say you need to start two copies of the game from the Godot editor because this is still very early days and they don't have dedicated client server packages. So you're still you're going to need to run a client uh, package and a server package. And if you have the server up, you can have both connect to it and play around and do your top down uh, third person uh, RPG stuff. Um, yeah, no, I like their description of a. Uh... With its top-down 2D perspective, it offers immersive uh, an immersive gaming experience. We have radically different uh, definitions for immersive, there, buddy. <laughs> I know. What, 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 is, what is your definition of immer- immersive, Pedro? Maple Explain. Story Plus. Explain being immersed. Uh, when you can forget that you know you are the human playing the video game. And you actually start thinking, okay, I need to go there instead of I need to steer my character to go in that direction. It's like, I want to go there. And being a, a game in 3D and having the like first person or over the shoulder third person is a lot easier for me to get fully immersed in a game. What if the character you're I, playing is a car? I, I mean, I, I, I guess I have, I, have, I have one of those like working <laughs> imaginations. So I don't really have that problem, I guess. I don't know. Apparently, I think your brain's got a function of imagination. It's just like how much of that you're willing to suspend in order to enjoy a video game. Well, that's that's there are games that you don't really need immersion to enjoy to any degree. I don't know, man. I gotta I gotta be pretty immersed when I get my cookie clicker on. I mean. And then there's games that do such a good job with the environment and telling that you don't have to imagine a whole damn lot, like Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate 3. Like, or you, or, they or, fill or in a lot ID. of the dots there, where, right? Where, where you can imagine a world, yeah. Um, but, like, but, but, but again, like, uh, I, I, I think immersive has to, is, like, a very, very personal thing. Subjective, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and like, because, I, 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 like, for me, immersive is more of, like, a narrative thing. If I'm, like, invested in the characters and I'm invested in the world, then I consider myself immersed rather than, say, like, I fully feel like I'm incarnated as uh, as a player. But that's because I am more of a pawn stance player than an actor stance player. Mm-hmm. I, I, okay, I, so uh, given your previous uh, recorded opinions on MMOs on the show, Jordan, uh, would you be immersed in Jay Dungeon? Uh, <laughs> Maybe I mean maybe if it had a maybe if it had a good story I haven't experienced it I haven't experienced any of the characters I could I could very well be immersed in the world if 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 I care about the fucking NPCs in the world then I consider that See, immersed you take something that looks like uh, what it looks also you need to put some uh, videos and screenshots you demonstrated that you understand the importance of this on the Go Dot subreddit and I know you're also the type of person who's going to watch this in the future Hi how's it going LGC cares Pe- put this shit on your GitHub page too Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just say, people get really, really upset about their Stardew Valley boyfriend or girlfriend. That's immersion. <laughs> so, I mean, even if it looks like this, and you start this, and the first three seconds, a TARDIS crashes in front of you, and it's a T Rex gets out with a lightsaber. I think that, you that's could, that's your pull request. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I might be a bit more immersed. <laughs> like what I'm saying, like you, you can you can get away with a lot. Like it's not really for me. It's not about graphics too. A large extent. Talk about Baba as you. Was I immersed in that? Pretty fucking much. And look at something like hipster pixel boomer shooters, you know? Like I own Fury. Like I could get immersed with that 36 years ago. I can't get immersed in that these days. I'm just like, I'm looking at pixel art. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool looking. I'm like, I'm not, it doesn't sell it to me anymore, you know? Yeah, no. Uh, again, uh, there are games that I really enjoy that I know for a fact I don't get immersed in them. Fallout 2, my all-time favorite game. I can never get truly immersed in that because uh, the uh, like the like the maps are hex grids, so your character can't actually do a straight line down the map. He goes x x x x x. <laughs> so that's that always. Even if I got immersed in anything, that it would immediately put me out as soon as I started moving. But at the same time, you also have yeah, my grid, second grids, all-time grids favorite game, me. which is Silent Hill 2, which, yes, that did very much immerse me. That was the first game In that fog. I genuinely... <laughs> no, that genuinely made, like, my the hairs on my back stand up because it's like, okay, this is legitimately good psychological horror. Good job. <laughs> 
So, moral of that story, everybody, is uh, Nori, wax that boy's back. <laughs> wax, it, wax it good. Or, or get, like, the lace. Slowly. Or, like, the hair. Tenderly. But more importantly, slowly. Make it count. Hey, if you want to tell us about how you get your back waxed, you can do that by heading over to LinuxGameCast.com. We'll get a contact button. You'll never guess what it does. That's right. It takes you right to Disney.com. No, it doesn't. <laughs> No, it doesn't. Not this week. But it will give you a couple options. Like, hey, if you're working on a game, you're working on a project, you want to come tell us about it, love to hear about it. You want to come on the show? Yeah, that'd be awesome, too. If you're working on crowdfunding, Kickstarter, if you got a demo, then scream in our direction. If you don't, then come on, don't. Because I'm not going to say you can figure that out. Because some of you cannot fucking figure that out. (laughs) If you're going to be sending us a press release, there's an email there. If you're just going to continually spam me with fucking press releases for shit that's unrelated to Linux, I'm going to unsubscribe, so don't waste your time. What, what about CNC? What, what, yeah, what, 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 there's and, a lot of CNC machining. So your molds yeah. are ready. It's like, hey? <laughs> you know what the entertaining thing is? Is the Google News recommendations for valves. Oh, okay. <laughs> for, 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 for piping and plumbing? Yeah. It's uh, pretty entertaining. So, uh, we got two this week, starting with somebody giving up. They're going away, Jordan. <gasps> yeah, uh, is it Ariel us. or Ariel? I don't know. Oh, I have a cousin a named mermaid. Ariel. Well, see, <laughs> I, I have a male cousin with that name, so I don't even know anymore, man. Uh, I've almost given up on Linux gaming for now, but I do enjoy listening to the podcast nonetheless. Very good show, Game Controller emoji, horns emoji, keep it up. Why? Don't, 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 don't give up. Just, just keep, keep, keep smashing your head in the brick wall, Give man. It that's, Let it that's go. How, that's how you go through. The dream's dead. Break on through. Straight back to okay, DOS with uh, you. The question is, uh, what was it that's uh, draining your Linux gaming ability? I would I say YouTube comment, let's be honest. I like including those every now uh, if, I don't know, my guess is probably never installing Linux in the first place, but it seemed like a good <laughs> I, all, all I play is Destiny and Fortnite, and therefore Linux sucks. There we go. Yeah, that's the ticket. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the, the, I mean, there, there are, there are people like that. Some, some games you just straight up can't play on. on you know, Fortnite is fairly popular with the youths. Why the app to that uh, person? Like, and I don't even say this, this is like a snarky, funny, har har thing that we do on the show. Like, the fuck are you doing? Not playing on a console. Like, I, I, if those were my games, I'm like, I would have a PS5. Like, I would not go through the trouble of setting up a gaming PC to play those two fucking games. No? Yeah, you'd get the laptop yeah. to do whatever and have the game's console. Yeah. So, so, some people are very romantically attached to the notion of PC gaming. Some people just have a computer that they like to play video games on. I don't That's... have enough imagination for that. Oh, uh, I, I, I believe in you. Just gotta, gotta read more books. Fuck trees. All right, what do we got up next? We got Doobie. we got budget. Yeah, uh, asking about budgets. They they say my fellow Linux gamers, I'm in the process of building a new PC with a tight budget. Are there good any good websites where I can buy used parts? What do you guys think of eBay, Pinterest, and Facebook? Any parts that I should avoid? Per- the fuck are you buying on? Do they sell shit? Uh, they, they I guess there's a, a, a social aspect in uh, Pinterest. Yes. I, oh, I, I don't know about Pinterest. I know Facebook Marketplace. That's been like mm-hmm. a thing forever. Uh, I don't want to get scammed. I've heard horror stories about people buying used parts that were broken or fake. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of the risk you run with with second hand, right? You got yeah. trust but verify. Get them to plug the thing in while you're picking it up, right? Like especially if you're going with Facebook Marketplace. Uh, that is that and Gumtree. If you in a country that Gumtree supports. Uh, th- that you're very much at what the What a loss that fucking bet. There it is. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. 775, yeah, yeah. baby. And eBay, I personally uh, do a lot of my secondhand shopping on eBay. And yeah, the, the, the thing on eBay to look for is if you have a high value item, like a graphics card. What the fuck is, Pedro, do you know about Pinterest? Uh, I know it's Nori binary. has a Pinterest account. All right, so like I'm I, I'm here on Pinterest, and I'm like, hey, give me that, and it's like, no, go to eBay. Like, yeah, they, they they seem to be pulling the listings from eBay. Oh shit! Oh, uh, there we go. You want some USB three holes? 
Damn. Damn, Daniel. That, well, that, that, that's I, I, a I know, mining uh, board. Um, I know, I know Pinterest is like a Tumblr thing, so people like will share links through Pinterest. So maybe that's mm-hmm. what that is. I have no idea. I've, this is as deep into Pinterest as I've ever been, man. I, yeah. The, uh, no, the, um, like I, you just use eBay and yeah, if you have, if you are looking at a graphics card or something high value, look at the amount of, um, karma, whatever it's called on eBay stars or some uh, shit. Yeah, the, the they have the little stars, um, do, which do, is do they like, have comment karma and post karma on eBay? <laughs> no, it's effectively like the the feedback that you've received. Um, only the positive counts. It's feedback ratings. Yeah, just look at the ratings uh, for each user, and if they have like triple digits or up, then you're probably okay. If they have zero ratings and they're selling a GPU, that's a scammer. <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah that's um, <laughs> risky i can only speak to ebay ebay you're safe no matter what you fucking buy at least in the states ebay will 100 yeah, percent side with you for the guarantee money back do not <laughs> now my bit of advice only pay through ebay because what pedro is touching on scammers what are they going to fucking do they're going to slide in them dms and be like yo here's the thing i'm going to need you to send me the money over this venmo or whatever, something yeah. other than paypal Mm-hmm. To which you go, send, send me a check, right? Some shit like that, and that—that's part of the scam. I'm a little bit hesitant to order from anybody with a, you know, like low. You know, if you see like a price that's too good to be true or borderline too good to be true, that's when you want to start doing things like how long has this account been active? What mm-hmm. is this account history? What do they typically sell? Because I'm more worried about like ending up with like stolen merchandise. You know, so. Kind of keep that in mind. What do you not buy? CPUs are... Damn, nothing I say is true. There we go. Done. CPUs are typically safe. Yeah, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't buy drives. I wouldn't buy used drives. Mm. Refer, refer, maybe used, no. Um, <laughs> with NVMe drives? Uh, okay, you know what? NVMe and SSDs, I absolutely would if they listed how many um, terabyte how worth the rights they've had right because that is something you can easily yeah, you can check from smart yeah. yeah right you can pull that up and same way with nvme drives because the refurb that i got from uh amazon that two terabyte drive nvme drive pulled it right up it's like yeah this thing's been i was curious about the fucking story because it had been rebooted like 36 times but it only had like four gigs written to it i'm like the fuck were you trying to do man they probably had it in the computer <laughs> for 36 boots, but they only ever like dumped the folder on it and left it. It's like, I, I couldn't figure out like with it, those clues. It's like, God, I understand how it got returned because that doesn't make any damn sense. But <laughs> someone called Batman. We need, we need, we need the world's greatest detective. Right. Um, reasonably like you save a couple hundred bucks on a video card. Stay away from deals that are too good to be true. Cause they're always, too good to be true there's always something yep. hooks up um you, you m- motherboards are okay usually i've <sighs> you, i say that to be hesitant but you know i'm on the lookout for that like that is my top priority safe search is that epic motherboard and like ebay is where if i find one that's used i'm still gonna buy it. you know if i can get one for 300 bucks i'm gonna fucking buy it but i'm gonna use that ebay make sure you order through ebay through paypal where you get that coverage would you do used RAM? Yeah, yeah, but but the problem is like with memory so fucking cheap at this point, you might as well just go and <laughs> yeah, get the new yeah. shit with a warranty, right? Like, yeah, like if if they're selling it, like, what's wrong with it, right? Like, mm. Uh, mm. sometimes, especially with like desktop RAM, it's just okay. I had like two sticks of four gigs, and then I upgraded, so they're selling or, or, new yeah. RAM. So or, or it's like, I, or maybe I, you need I, older I had two RAM. sticks of. I had two sticks of yeah. like 3200 megahertz, but I bought like four sticks of like 3600 megahertz right. and I just wanted to replace the whole kit. So yep. yeah, sometimes you get that, but like... And then you get like a part, you know, resellers and stuff where they just have bins of RAM, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah how, how many kilos do you need? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can, can, I, can, I, can I buy like, a bucket of laptop RAM? Laptop RAM, you, especially DDR3, you can get that, yeah, in bulk. Yeah. 
They're like, yo, he's like, how many bags do you want? No, no, we don't. No, we just fill bags and send it to you. Now, now, now I'm just imagining like going to Bulk Barn and they have like one of one of like the scoops with like just laptop dims. You, you just get scoop one out, kilogram a- of mm-hmm. uh, DDR three SO dims. There you go. Right, they get original recipe. <laughs> they, no, they, they they gotta look it up on that big wheel they have with all the prices. Like, mm, mm, yeah. um, yeah, I guess I'd buy motherboards. Uh, power, power supplies? No, I'm I'm gonna buy no, power supplies no, with the warranty. No, 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 no. <laughs> power supplies is probably fine by them secondhand, but uh, I would avoid that. That's the one thing you don't skimp because a bad power supply will take everything else out. Yeah. So Ca- cases are probably fine. You might want to no, give this them a case call. Cases out of the window. Fine. Wasn't Facebook <laughs> included in this? Like, correct. Okay, if it's somebody, yes. Yeah. Like locally, and you can go inspect the item. All this shit goes out mm-hmm. the window. Like, long, yeah. long, yeah, long yeah, if you can see the item before you actually buy it, and use it, <laughs> not just see it. If you can bring whatever you need to bring, or you can go there and they can demonstrate yeah. that it's functions. Don't be like, you know, some dude's like, because they get a trench coat in my head for some reason, a fucking parking lot pulls out like a 4090, and they're like, yeah, man, 300 bucks. Like, ah. Uh-uh. No, you got to be able to. Oh, plug he's that absolutely in. the incognito <laughs> Where mode was man that in, my, from? in my imagination. <laughs> oh yes, right. Then you need the fucking moral decision, multiple choices to come up. You're like, shit. I do verify it. It is a real thirty ninety. I think I want three hundred dollars cash. Mm. <laughs> Are they gonna send the Pinkertons after me? That's the real question. <laughs> Are they, gonna, are they gonna pull a Watsi? Is Jensen gonna come knocking on my door and be like, I want my card it's, back? It's situations like that, just, just back the fuck out of Ben and be like, nah, man. Um, he pulls out a gun. He's like, you're not leaving until you buy this video card. But yeah, one of, one of the things to keep in mind is, um, especially on eBay, if you filter by just items that are pickup only, uh, and you have like a car that you can go and go pick up the item. Those tend to be so much cheaper. They're cheap because than... nobody wants that human interaction. Yeah, <laughs> those are those actually tend to be much cheaper. Like if I was looking, it was AIOs just because I saw some YouTuber talk about AIOs and I figured let's look at the price of that thing. And if I wanted to order one, it was three hundred pounds used. If I wanted to go pick one up, I could pick one up working for a hundred. So. Yeah, G- generally it's the, the, the ones who are the ones who want you to go come pick it up are genuinely just trying to get rid of it. The ones yes. who are going to mail it to you are trying to sell it. Like, and a lot of times you'll run into things people just don't want to be asked with shipping. Yeah. And as a seller, you don't want the other Insurance. end of like the person ordering it. And they're like, I didn't get. I got a rock in mine and mm-hmm. like, uh huh. No, you didn't. <laughs> so, uh, I, I understand it both ways. Just, just use basic caution. That's all there is to it. And Amazon warehouse. If you, if you want to play eBay with a safety net. Yeah. <laughs> e- eBay with even more guaranteed refunds. <laughs> right. Of like, just, uh, it, it, it's that risk reward though. You get, you got to play that. I mean, that's also part of it. Like, I, I get a little bit of a buzz when I get a really good deal. I'm like, yeah, did good. Can't believe I got that for that. But um, I like it, the it, the whole. Oh, you, you, the starting <clears throat> bid is uh, twenty pounds. Okay, here's twenty pounds. Yeah, <laughs> and then it, it finishes it, like you won. Oh wait, really? <laughs> yeah, this is this is my new game. Like my new product. I was telling Pedro during the break. Uh, I was like, camera old like fifties and sixties era camera lessons for Nikon. I'm like, got to put twenty bucks on that. Why? Because I just won one and another mm-hmm. one. I'm like, fuck, all right, <laughs> shit. Why it, not? It's that whole uh, gold price versus iron price thing. You know, you can pay the gold price, but sometimes it's worth it to pay the iron price. You just... Okay, what are things that you only buy new? Power supplies. Per- yes. <laughs> uh, power, power supplies. I, mo- most of the, you know, I don't buy a lot of, like, used PC components. I've bought, like, an old laptop off of someone before. Mm. Um, but like never, never like a vid, a video card or something or like, yeah, I'm trying or, to, I'm tr- okay, here's something I'd never, I, I don't buy them. So take this for what it's will has been forever. Uh, a spinning hard drive. I'd never buy used. Those can be some good deals though. <laughs> Me personally I mean, yeah. as an individual that's, I, I draw the line because I don't trust the motherfuckers to package them correctly for shipping. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know what? There I, is that. <laughs> I, I, I feel that having just dropped like $1,100 on like spinny disk drives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you're like, do I have to? Do I have to pay that much money? Is there is there a way I can get these cheaper? No, you, and, you can buy they, 77 of these uh, four gigs off eBay, and we can get creative with this gas with this, generator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I just need a shit ton of SCSI cards, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Daisy chain them? That, that works. J-Bod? Yeah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, um, before we get out of here... I, just a bag of dicks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Nothing but a bag of dicks all the way down. If you like what we do, head back over to Linux Gamecast. Uh, big thanks to everybody who supports the show. All of our patrons over at patreon.com. Stick around for your names in the credits. I uh, want to thank our latest patron. I forgot to include them last week. Zebafang. Thank you very much. Just became, a, I think, a death note. So that was pretty dope. Uh, speaking of Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of things bonuses for helping us out early access to videos you get the live and uncut in podcast format which is kind of crazy one of the things i'm going to start doing since youtube is getting squirrely with where we can remove ads from youtube i know that's counterproductive to profitability but hey um they're just going to start smashing those things in and i can't take them out so i'm experimenting with putting the video up on patreon with just no ads just regular quality if you want to watch it that way let me know what you think about it. But we have LibrePay, PayPal, one-time donations. If you got one of those Bitcoin things, they're not worth anything anymore. So send them all our way, PayPal. Amazon wishlist, Jordan, Jill, Pedro, and I got one for the studio. We got shirts. We got Amazon storefronts. And of course, a humble affiliate. There, I think we covered everything. Um, we, don't, we don't have any uh, donations through the uh, low, we, low Earth Orbit we, Ion donation. Nope. We do. We do. I got a store though. Store dollar schemecast Go go buy some t shirts. Yes. Coach yourself with our faces. <laughs> or don't. drink some mayonnaise out of your hell elk smug. I mean, that's acceptable. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's the winter time. A pipe and hot cup of mayo. Let it cool down but, a little bit. Like you don't want to bring yourself yogurt in the mayo jar and just go into the park and tell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't get any better than that. On that bombshell, come play with us every Saturday night if you get a chance. 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. After the fact, we got the YouTube channels. Everything's over on linuxgamecast.com. Put us in your face. Get in touch with me. I'm on Zitter at Vinstone. On Mastodon at Vin over at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Doing those things. Um, scream at me in Discord. Scream at me in IRC. You know. Unless you're that one motherfucker on YouTube from the beginning of the show I was telling you about. <laughs> Fuck him. I'm everyone's favorite mayo bottle filled with Greek yogurt. Jordan, you can follow me on Mastodon at Frojo at Mastodonlinuxgamecast.com or on Twitter or whatever at burning at the Burning Fool. Yeah. Squirt, squirt. <laughs> you can find the things that tickle my brain all the way up my nose. But if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can go to uh, Mastodon, uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.bloodyscapecast.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me or on Discord if you uh, have me around. It's too powerful, too extreme. <laughs> Come to his house, knock on his door, snap into a slim Yeah, gem. be creepy like that. <laughs> Do it. Man, if somebody knocks on your door, you know you don't know him. Right? Right. Like, doorbell, knock, I'm like, uh uh-uh, all the motherfuckers either just gonna walk in my house or send me a text message and be like, hey, do Bitch, I'm here, yeah. Well, we gotta thank our advisors, Omegas, Arthur, and we gotta thank our executive producers, bitch, they're here, Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, Tomas, Hakim, David, Eshep, and Ian, and our alumni fan, Super Desktop, Ian, Glorious Eggy, and Nubin. I'm scared that Scott's gonna die of diabetes. Radarex, Mac, and a trudgy Veritanuda. Justin Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, Dancing Joe, Ogie One, and Kyrilla. All of our beautiful So many cheerleaders. death notes. You're all truly wonderful. No, seriously, I forgot Scott. you last week. Oil of Hope and Piper. You see what's going <laughs> <Andrew>? on <Lou? laughs> Look in general. It's horrifying. All of our fine, upstanding cannibals. Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Legends Nero, Old, is not list, John. Eshep, Gametron, New Detroit, DSN, Joe, Aromatic, Dev, and Kai, Jorai. Thank you. You lovely psychopaths. Till next week, enjoy. Mayonnaise. 
piping hot. I'm telling you, man. You, you just take like a little dop of a mayo, put it in your Dr. Pepper. I'm, so, I'm sorry. All I have is Miracle Whip. Please forgive me. Fucking Canadians, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dino is there like the uh, Canadian equivalent? Is there like some fucked up topping? Is uh, no, mi- mi- Miracle Whip exists. Five dudes. <laughs>